Thank you. Well, first of all, uh, my name is Janae Florence. I'm with the San Antonio Police Department. I'm a deputy chief in charge of the terrorism division, <clears throat> and I'm here to speak on behalf of my chief, uh, William McManus from San Antonio. I provided a letter uh, that Chief McManus sent so that you could hear his views. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for, your, for uh, listening to everyone here today. I know it's been rather tedious. I've sat here for all the testimony. So I appreciate you all listening to all the people that had to speak here today. And I know that you've asked us not to be redundant. However, the people that you've heard today have said pretty much what my chief has sent me here to say to you all. But I can't go back to them and tell them I didn't talk. So I'm going to have to be a little bit redundant, repeat some of what they said. <clears throat> chief McManus strongly opposes this bill. And the reason that he strongly opposes it is not because of the control it has on the officers or what it has to do with our authority to enforce the law or not. He opposes it mainly for the reason that you've heard all afternoon. The people in our community, we have worked very hard to build relationships with those folks. We make a lot of community meetings. We have a lot of officers assigned to community policing. And we work hard to build those relationships. You've heard from all these people that what this bill is going to do, regardless of what our authority is or is not, their perception is that we're going to be able to check their immigration status, get them deported, separate families, and that is not what the San Antonio Police Department is interested in doing. That's not the perception that we want our citizens to have. You mentioned not just the victims, because I came prepared to talk about victims of crime, the lady whose husband batters her and now she's afraid to call because he is the breadwinner. If he gets deported, who's going to be paying the bills in her house? Um, but you're right. The drug houses, or there's so many ways. Witnesses to crimes we have, sir. And he's abusing her. Don't y'all want to put him in jail? Yes, we do. We do want to put him in jail. But the point is, if she's afraid, if she's afraid of him, she's not going to call the police. He's not, he's not going to be a very good breadwinner in jail either. Or he? or her own status. If she's worried about her own status. Her own status. Makes right. Sense. The other right. Side. She is not going to call the police, and that's what we're worried about. We're afraid that crime is going to go up because crime reporting is going to go down. We don't want our citizens afraid to call the San Antonio police. Yes, sir. Well, Chief, doesn't – Chairman, the Chief doesn't – thank you, one, for being here, and I was just telling them, I said, that's my deputy chief and from back home, and, and that's uh, – I, I recognize your voice. Also, she's uh, – uh, went to high school in my district, John Jay High School. But yes, I did go to John Jay. Thank you. Chief, um, don't you also believe – that it will create a, a new class of potential victims? I mean, don't the criminals all know where the, the low-hanging fruit is? And if they know, they can prey on communities that will think twice before going before calling the police. Wouldn't they, they necessarily start uh, – you create a new target of, of potential of victims? Yes, sir. Thank you for bringing that up, Mr. Menendez. That was on my next page. Okay. I hadn't quite got there yet, but – I appreciate you giving me a little fast forward there. No problem. Uh, but that is true. And as far as the, the perception, I just want to say one more thing about that perception. Uh, just last week, uh, we have a, we're going to have a new 911 dispatch center that's opening in San Antonio. I went to a press conference about that new 911 center, and we talked about how the fire and police were going to be working together and what a great job it was going to be, what a great thing for the community. The first question I was asked by uh, the Spanish-speaking station, which was Univision, they wanted to know what happens when a Spanish-speaking person calls the police, and when we get there, are we going to be checking their immigration status? That was the concern of their community, and I had to assure them, no, that's not what we're, that's not what we're interested in doing. One other thing I don't think that we've talked about is training. Local police, at least I'll speak for San Antonio Police Department, we don't get training on immigration issues. That's not part of our curriculum for our police academy. That's not part of our in-service training. We have almost 3,000 sworn officers in San Antonio, and it would require a lot of training to get them up to speed on immigration issues. Keep in mind that our LAOS funds, which is the funds we get from the state for training, have been reduced in the next budget year. So that's going to cause more hardship for the police department. I spoke last week to the Senate subcommittee, and Chief McManus also sent a letter that day. Uh, that letter was all Fort Worth, El Paso, and, and also Chief McManus in San Antonio, all opposing this legislation. Most of the major cities in Texas do oppose this, the police departments. 
San Antonio Police Department and Chief McManus also participate in the major, major city chiefs, which is major city police chiefs around the nation. Major city chiefs has issued a letter also opposing this legislation. We're concerned about fighting crime in San Antonio, and yes, there are some people who, with immigration issues who uh, commit crime, but there's also a lot who don't, and those are the people that we feel like we have to protect, and we can't do that if they won't call the police. Uh,